Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech and in this video I'm going to talk about how I use Notion to start my day. Because I work for multiple organizations and I have different assets in my life like this YouTube channel, my personal life, a volunteer organization called Abonai in the Netherlands and my freelance work for big companies, I have to drag in a lot of tools. Think Jira, Todoist, Slack, Discord, uh, Outlook also comes to mind and Thankfully, I have Notion to keep them all in check. To start my day, I have a dedicated icon on my taskbar called Day Start. And this opens the Notion Day Start page using Edge in a browserless window. So I'm still inside a browser, except it's just showing Notion. I usually drag it into a corner. I use fancy zones for that. That's something that splits up my work screen into different sections. And when I look at the day start, there's a lot of boxes already checked. And that's because I checked those yesterday. So the first thing that I do is I press Ctrl A twice to select everything and then click on one of the boxes. And this unchecks all of them. It's an easy way to get started and a nice way to reuse this page every day. One of the reasons I use checkboxes is because that's habit forming for me. I tried using bullet points previously and that just didn't work as well to get like a morning routine going. Also, one of the things that I noticed is that very often the morning routine doesn't always happen in exactly the same way. And using checkboxes, I can, for example, make breakfast before I have coffee and things will just flow out. As long as I have everything checked before I get started on the actual work, my day start will be roughly the same each and every day, thanks to Notion. Now in the top right, you see a small picture. It's a Bruce Lee quote. I enjoy having a few quotes of him on the top side because they're usually about applying yourself or getting things done. Uh, and it just makes my mood better when starting the day. If I scroll down a bit, there's the flashcards, and that's a form of spaced repetition. It's a small table that I use to memorize things. So a few tricks that I did, you don't see anything right now, that's because I practiced that this morning. If I open it and we go to the full table view, what you see is that there's entries like questions, and then there's checkboxes going from L1 to L5. I'll scroll to the side a bit because I don't really use this uh, view very often. In the end, there's a summary that creates levels. And the level is basically how many checkboxes are checked. I use this value together with the last changed date to show or not show something to practice that day. So when I go back to my day start and I go to filters, you see that if the level is equal or one, it will show it each and every day because it says it's before today. So I mark it today and it gets moved to tomorrow. If it goes up in levels, then the distance becomes longer. So you see like on two or three at that level, it takes two days because it checks if it's done before yesterday. And then finally, anything that has more than three levels is basically disappearing for a week. Now, the way I use it is that if they pop up, I look at the question, and if I know the question without looking inside the notes to get the answer, then I can click the box and it moves up a level. If I don't know the question, then for some reason I forgot and I need to practice this one. So I look at the page and then I unclick a box. And in both cases, the modified time gets set to now. And that means that the thing gets hidden for today, tomorrow, like whatever space timing is with that level. This works very well and the only thing that I do different is that when I have the first box, so like the first box is like level one, it doesn't really matter if it's right or wrong. In both cases, I click it because then it moves to the next day. So the first box is a bit of a, it's like a trick I work around. Click the box, modify date, change, done. Then I get to my processing of inboxes. Now I have two main inboxes and the absolute main for me is still Todoist. I can capture stuff with Notion, but it's not nearly as easy as with Todoist. It's quick on my phone, it's quick in the browser, and best of yet, it works with Google Home. Google, create task. I need to work on the video. Okay, Google, create task. I need to work on the video. Capture is one thing, but processing is another. The inbox for Todoist for me is very simple, and because it's always like one day, it doesn't have to be perfect. I like inboxes because they can be a bit 
messy. And you can see that as well because I have here create a cat game and it shows assistant. That means that I use the voice assistant from Google to add it. And very often that one doesn't actually capture what the idea was that was in my head. So in this case it says create a cat game. What it means is create or buy a cat gate. And while that isn't perfect because you read it the next day, you usually can correct it here and put it on the right spot. And then under it is Notion homepage YouTube. And that also seems to be very vague, but when I click on it, it will bring me to like a YouTube search result, which I added to Todoist. And then I usually remember, oh yeah, right. I wanted to do keyword research. So what happens is I just update these values to put them in the right box project, wherever they need to go with the right text. And then I can defer them till a later time. Once I'm done with Todoist, I'm getting to Notion. And for Notion, I either put stuff straight into the page where I want it. So for example, I have an extension to add stuff straight to my wish list or to my recipes, but mostly I don't have time for that. I just wanna get it out of the way and know for sure that I can pick it up later. So I have a table in Notion called Inbox and I just share stuff there for later use. Now if I go to that page, it shows you an organized inbox setup and on the left side is my inbox and that just is empty now because I didn't add anything but say I add an example that I did throughout today and the nice thing here is that I have my resources and projects next to it and if I say for example that I want to put the example into Animal Crossing I can just drop it there and it goes straight to the right place it's very easy for me to organize notes quickly in the morning and keep going with my day. Once I'm done with the inboxes, it's time to check my schedule. Like what am I going to focus on today? And to do that, I have embedded Google Calendar and Todoist into this page. It's mostly to get like a quick overview before I get started. It's not so much to work in. You see Google Calendar and that's my area of responsibility set up. So it shows blocks that I want to dedicate time to today. It's a bit outdated because today I'm working on YouTube and it shows that I should be gaming at seven. But generally it gives me like a nice overview, big rock picture of what I'm going to do that day. Now to the right is my Todoist embed and it shows me today. And that's because I use today to plan what I'm going to do today. Shocking it seems. It, adds all the projects and tasks that I collected throughout my planning phases. And then I just chuck them into a day and try to get it to a level where I'm saying like, I can actually get this done today. Anything that I can't get done today either gets moved to another day. If I know that I'm going to have to pick it up at that day, or I remove the date and trust that it will become part of the system again once the project hits. So usually the tasks are part of a project. That means that there will be a moment when I'm project planning that and then I'll get to those tasks and I'll schedule them in again. Um, I try to avoid having tasks that I constantly move forward a day because that just feels counterproductive. Now that I know the big rugs for today and I know how busy I will be, there's a line under it that says engage socials. And I use an embed trick here to make a few icons that I can click on. And those icons take me directly to the Reddit, Facebook or Discord page where I wanna check out and help people with Notion. And I've put like a 15 minute marker on top of that. And that means that I have these small hourglasses that I put on to well, basically limited, because if I go onto social networks, I tend to get lost in the moment and then I just keep going at it. And before I know it, I've lost two hours and I don't get towards the big goals that I set for myself that day. So I try to limit myself to 15. I'm not super tight on it. Like if I'm solving a problem for someone, I finish that problem, even if the 15 minutes are up. But generally, they're a guideline to make sure that it doesn't spiral out of control. Then we get to once a week, and I'm not really sure about this one yet. Um, the idea of the once a week is that I don't forget to do my weekly reviews, which I always tend to skip or forget or don't make time for. Um, but now I have to check market every day, which feels a bit like double work. So I'm going to find a better solution for that. That's on my clean up checkout list. Finally, I get to the dive into life territory and that's because I work for a system that I call my uh, technical superhero system and it's based on para and it takes the big chunks that I have in my life like my 
freelance work, my YouTube, my personal, and divides them up into different workspaces. Now, when I go into one of these workspaces, I try to focus on that area of my life. So it's totally geared towards not switching between these large chunks. Today, I'm only talking about the day start page and I'll dive into some of these live territories in a later video. Thanks for watching. If there's anything that I was using during this video that you're not clear about, be sure to mention it in the comments and I'll try to add some help or show you how you can build that same setup or I'll plan a video if it's a bit more complex. This was Tools on Tech. I talk about using tech to be more productive. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.